Well, good evening. Um, it is uh, really great to be here and uh, speak with you this evening. Um, the night before last, I uh, had the opportunity to speak at the Global Social Business Summit and had the great honor of sharing the stage with some amazing people, some of which you'll, you'll hear tonight speaking, including Professor Muhammad Yunus. Um, but, and the, the main objective of my talk uh, was to use my experience of living and working in space to illustrate what we like to call the orbital perspective, that view that we have of our planet um, from space. Um, tonight, I was going to just kind of have a, I, I prepared a similar presentation um, along the same lines, um, but we're going to scrap that and we're going to do something different tonight. And the reason uh, that we're going to do something different tonight is because during my presentation at the summit, uh, an idea was born. Um, well, specifically during the question and answer session, and, and those of you that were there, maybe when, when, you, when we go through this, maybe you'll, you'll remember that, uh, that moment when the, uh, when the light bulb came on. But um, basically what I want to do is I, I want to talk about this idea. You know, we're at TED. We had an idea that uh, I think is worth spreading, so we're going to shift the gears there. But before I get into that, I, I want to uh, define what I mean by the orbital perspective. Um, I realize that I have an obligation to uh, share the experience of living and working in space, and um, by sharing that, uh, to talk about this uh, orbital uh, perspective that we have, I've had the, the great opportunity to watch meteors uh, pass through the atmosphere below us, um, burn up as they go through the atmosphere, shooting stars, if you will. Um, I've had the opportunity to watch the Earth transform from day to night 16 times a day, to watch you know, these long shadows on the horizon as the sun is setting, cast by thunderstorms, just absolutely beautiful. To watch this line slowly move across the earth um, that defines the difference between day and night, and then contemplate the stark differences in the human activities on either side of that line. I've, as you can see here, I've, we've flown so close to dancing curtains of auroras that you could feel like you could reach out and touch it. But I think the most amazing perspective I had, and, and I did talk a, a little bit about this at the, uh, at the summit, was uh, on one of my spacewalks that I had the opportunity to do, uh, at one point my feet were strapped to the end of the very large space station's robotic arm. Um, and with me on the end of the arm, it was flown through a maneuver that took me across a big arc, uh, across the, the top of the space station and back. And at the top of this arc, I was 30 meters above the space station, looking down at this incredible accomplishment of humanity, the International Space Station, and looking at it against the backdrop of our indescribably beautiful Earth just absolutely took my breath away. But as I looked down at this fragile oasis, this fragile island that, that has protected all of us from the vacuum of space, and it's indescribably beautiful, I couldn't help but to also think about the unfortunate realities of life on our planet for many of its inhabitants. And I was really faced with a, a sobering contradiction when you think about the people on the planet that don't have clean water to drink, enough food to eat, the poverty and the conflict uh, that exists. You know, si since the beginning of human spaceflight 50 years ago, astronauts have reflected on how peaceful, how beautiful, how fragile the Earth looks. And this, these are not cliches that astronauts say because it feels good. These are, these are really heartfelt responses to a very moving uh, experience of, of looking back on the Earth. The point is that we could look down at the Earth, and we could look down at an area on the Earth and really feel empathy for the struggles that all people face on the Earth. We could look down from our orbital perspective and realize that we are all riding through the universe on this, on this spacecraft that we call Earth, that we're all in, the, in this together, that we're all interconnected, that we're all family. This is what we call the orbital perspective. It saddens me and it compels me to action when I think that we have the capability, we have the technology, we have the resources to solve many, if not all, of the problems facing our planet. Yet, a billion people don't have access to clean water. Many people go to bed every night hungry. There's people that die every day from completely curable and, and um, preventable diseases. You know, for thousands of years, uh, throughout all of human history, if you were to say um, that it's possible to fly to the moon, people would have thought you were crazy. So, and, and simply, the reason for that is because we, we had never done it before. So, fast forward, 
several thousand years, uh, up, up until about 50 years ago, and through human ingenuity, through the determination of the human spirit, we have gone to the moon and we have returned. Many people today feel that there are many problems that face our planet that simply can't be solved, that it's impossible. Poverty is one of them. People say that it's impossible to lift the entire population of the world out of poverty. We have always had the poor, and we always will, they say. But if we can go to the moon, if we can join, nations join together and build an incredible orbiting research facility, we can solve many of the problems facing our planet. I believe that we live in a world where the possibilities are only limited by our imagination and our, and our will to act. The answer is, just do something. I think the challenges that, that we face as humanity come down to how each of us individually on a person-to-person -person basis commits to make a change, no matter how big or how small. The good news is there are thousands of organizations around the world that are striving to make a difference, are striving to make the world a better place, that we can, if we choose to, lend a hand. The bad news is there really isn't, for the most part, a unified, coordinated effort to solve many of the problems facing our planet. One of my personal objectives on the mission um, that I flew was to use the orbital perspective, use that perspective that I tried to illustrate with this uh, film that you just saw, to inspire people to make a difference, to inspire people to improve, improve our world. And to that end, I created a, um, or we created, is it not, there it goes, a um, project at FragileOasis.org and the, the vision, the goal for Fragile Oasis was to inspire people to make a difference with the orbital perspective and provide them the tools to do that. Um, one of the things that we tried to do is we tried to pair the systems on a spacecraft that are designed to provide life, systems to provide clean water, clean air, uh, clean energy, food, health, and pair them with systems on our spaceship Earth, on our planet that we live in, systems and projects that are designed to do that and to provide a, a mechanism or a vehicle for different organizations to collaborate, to synergize, to, to, to work together. Um, so here's where the idea comes in. Since there are other organizations around the world that are trying to bring problems and solutions together, that are trying to offer vehicles to collaborate. The idea is that we should unify these efforts. We should unify the efforts to establish an effective mechanism to collaborate to solve the challenges facing our world. So what's the first step? Uh, the first step would be to basically identify, find, bring together uh, different organizations. And again, we, we talked about that this, uh, this idea, um, it's not a new idea, we're not, I'm not claiming it's an original idea, but it's an idea, again, worth spreading. It's an idea that hasn't taken root yet. It's an idea that is in its infancy, um, that for this presentation was just basically pulled together today. Uh, but the idea would be to go out and to bring these organizations together, to basically bring them together to collaborate. So we take these organizations that are trying to offer vehicles of collaboration, offer ways to synergize and collaborate and synergize with them. And by doing that, I think we'll find that different organizations have different pieces of the puzzle. Professor Yunus talked about um, the trial and error process where you have to go down three or four paths and before you realize they're dead ends and then you find the right path. Why does everybody have to do that? Why can't everybody know that this is, is the path to go on? So that's uh, the part of the goal. Um, so the overall goal would be to create one simple, open source, user-friendly mechanism for collaboration so that we could learn from each other's successes and fail failures and basically reduce a lot of the duplication of effort that exists. So what should this look like? Um, well, what, it sh what I think it shouldn't look like is it shouldn't be its own entity. It should, it should simply be a portal for communication, a portal for collaboration. One of the ideas that we came up with was to have basically a dashboard. And on this dashboard, this is the, uh, the control panel of Spaceship Earth or the control panel of a, uh, of a spaceship. And on this has various gauges. Uh, let's say uh, water would be one of the gauges. So the gauge would be set on one billion. 
and that means that one billion people don't have access to clean, safe drinking water. When you click on that gauge, it would take you to the water page, and on the water page would be a brief description of the problem. It would talk about a little bit about why the problem exists, and then it would have links or tools to uh, see all the different organizations around the world that are working on that problem, and it would have the mechanism on that page for them to all collaborate to see how they could work together, to see how they could synergize. Um, this obviously is just one idea. Um, there's many other ideas out there. The point, though, the point that I'm trying to make is that there should be one unified open source effort to provide an overarching mechanism for collaboration. So the purpose of my TED Talk uh, tonight is to offer an invitation. Uh, if you are a representative of an organization, and there's, like I said, lots of them out there that are trying to collaborate, um, we want to invite you to uh, come and start a discussion uh, to brainstorm uh, possibilities of collaboration. And um, one, of, one of the organizations that's out there that's trying to do this is the Hub. And um, the Hub has graciously volunteered to spearhead the, the initial coordination effort of this. And uh, Jonathan Robinson, co-founder of Hub, is somewhere in the room. And uh, we came up with this what, about two minutes before uh, we started tonight? So, <laughs> so uh, again, it's an idea worth spreading, even if, you have to, even, even if it was just born. Um, so the uh, first step would be to uh, invite everybody uh, to talk. The second step would be to let's all get together, uh, either physically or virtually, and start to craft uh, this vehicle. And with the overall goal of the vehicle to form a united, effort of collaboration so that we can reduce that sobering contradiction that we see when we look at the Earth um, and assist those that are striving to improve life on Earth so that our planet becomes not only visibly beautiful, but one where life is beautiful for all. Thank you.